A very warm welcome back to the Western Wilds for episode 42 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Okay, it's just before two o'clock. We're still in March. On the last episode, I did say that I was going to plough out these two sections here to grass them, which was my original intent when I bought the plot and then didn't do anything with it. So that should... I mean, I was thinking of doing one crop and then one grass, but I'm going to grass the whole lot, so I've got a load of grass available. I'm also going to load some logs onto my trailer to take up to the North Sawmill, and then as we move into April, I'm going to um, bale those poplars. I've got a plan for that as well. I did say in the last episode I wasn't going to mulch. <laughs> I can't help myself. Um, if we go to our fields, you'll see... Should we go to growth and crop types i've put grass in that one now that field i said i was going to leave because i was going to do something with it i'm not sure what i'm going to do but i've grassed that so i've now got canola in this one corn in that one and cotton in that one so they're all planted they're all good to go fertilizer wise they just need unfortunately rolling uh, these small ones aren't too bad it's the bigger ones that take a bit of time as you can imagine um, I've got one of the lorries pulling the, uh, I've tried very different roller combinations. I thought we'd try them off camera to, um, let's turn on crate fields, drop that down. Yeah, I'm kind of off camera on my test map to see if I can speed up the rolling process and short of, I mean, uh, another ones I've tried have worked. I've tried with the, uh, the Schnuffelstuck, the uh, rear attacher. I've tried with the, the, the single drawbar that I've got here, the drawbar attacher. Um, I've tried using the lorries. I've tried using various different configurations and combinations. And it looks as it stands, unless anyone's got a, not an option that they've, they've got that works, but I haven't been able to find one. I'm finding it will go maximum. I managed to get it go is 10 miles an hour. At the moment it's run at seven, but I could get one rolling at ten, but it doesn't it didn't really gain me that much that it was worth you know mucking around with, so I decided to leave it. Uh, a few different people had also commented and messaged me about oh this one does the same thing, that's alright. I was gonna use the pickup, but the pickup's over the gold production. I've got that just putting some water in and some uh, stone. Uh, different options for making sure I get my ploughing straight by attaching different vehicle combinations together. You can hire a worker and it will do a straight line for you with the plough on the back, I think it was. Um, I've spent ages looking through my comments and my messages and I couldn't find who it was. So I thought, oh, I'll give that a go and I couldn't find it. Uh, it might have been Baron Papper. I thought Rob maybe. There was a list of people I thought it could be. I'm going to go just over onto here because I want this all to join up. So I will reseed that anyway. It's gone to there. And then I'll extend that one as well. So we'll have a whole load more grass. That's at least the plan. I don't know if I'm going to roll the mega field. I'm just thinking time-wise, I need to try and get a couple of episodes done. Um, I haven't got time to spend a few hours rolling <laughs> in between episodes, unfortunately. I haven't got the, uh, the time. I want to roll over into April and get the poplar done. And let's also look in that potentially I'm not going to get another video up Thursday morning. It also means there'll be no mod reviews Thursday, Friday. Possibly Monday. I always say that, but the journey back's quite a long journey. And um, often I get back and I feel absolutely shattered. Um, and I don't always do a mod review. I oh, will see. I might do. Never say never, you know. I said before when I'm doing these, it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight, it's not the end of the world. When you hire a worker to do any work, you just overlap it just a little bit and you can take in any errors and bits you've made mistakes on. We're keeping pretty straight. It's not too bad do need to do some repair work on the, I think the tractor and the uh, uh, and the plough kind of joined up alright so that's the first stage done outline I 
I'll do the other one next to us. I think the mulch is mulcher, the roller's probably done the field it was on. So I'll switch that one over in just a second. The thing is with this, because I'm creating my own field, I can't hire a worker to do this. So what I'll need to do is jump over, get the uh, roller going on the next field, then come back to carry on with this. And then we'll, we'll whiz down. And now the other thing as well, I've been through looking at the various different mods available for wheel loaders, for loading logs. Um, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to wait till the, the Volvo comes out with the um, expansion. Because the ones that come for the wheel loader and the few modded ones, then they're, they're not much different in size and haven't really worked any better. Again, I've been trying a few out here and there just to see. Haven't worked any better than using that strap system I'm using on the telehandler. So I've got one down there. I'll show you when I load up. I only managed to get like three logs in it and I can get way more than that using the telehandler with the big bag handler thing. Um, Unfortunately, that just seems to be the case. And um, that was something I was going to say, because uh, I was asked the other day about that again. If we go down to front loader tools, again, details are in the description, it's all there. It's that one there, the John Deere Big Bag Winch is part of the Big Bag and Support Package mod. Um, <laughs> where that is on my list. But anyway, yeah, that's what it is. So if you're looking for it, uh, big bag and support package by Farm Centro Soul. So it's that one there that has the, uh, the strap option. You can have it front loader or wheel loader or um, telehandler. So I could put one of those, technically I could put one of those on the wheel loader, couldn't I? Maybe I'll give that a go. What colour have I got at the moment? I think I did my wheel loader in... to do it in that colour? How much is it? I'll lease it just in case. We can give it a go with both. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you down there in a minute. I'll get both these ploughed out. What I'm going to do with these... Oh, they're going to need liming, aren't they, as well? Uh, I will fertilise them, lime them, and then these are going to have grass seed put in. Doesn't seem to matter what I do. I've still got loads of work to do off camera, haven't I? Ugh. Never mind. We'll get there. Seventeen minutes past three. Those signs are driving me mad. <laughs> That's not how I left it. Short turn around again. I need to give the pigs a little bit of food, and I need to feed the sheep. But I'm going to load some logs on. Um, I haven't really shown me using the new Scorpion King. We bought it a few episodes back, didn't we? And I kind of have used it a little bit, but I didn't really show me using it. Not very much anyway. Uh, what do we want? Good food. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Don't 
don't think we're going to need a huge amount, but considering we have doubled the amount of pigs we've got on, on here, in here, I need more of this more in a moment. And then, oh, I'll bring the lorry through actually. I'm probably only going to need one trailer. I haven't got a huge amount to take up to the North Sawmill. But I think I've got another one of the big chunky trees. I might have a couple more here to cut down, but I'm going to do one of those. We've got a few logs there, a few logs there, and a few a little bit further over. And what I was talking about, the wheel loader. I mean, that grabs okay. And there's another one standard in game. That comes with the lead pair telehandler mod. The standard in-game one's about the same size, just a slightly different colour. And there's another one that's got a longer reach here, and I thought it'd be really cool. And when I tried that, it was just too flat. I, I couldn't, it still wouldn't pick up more than about three logs. So I'll have a go with that. Again, a lot of that will come down to technique, but you know, <laughs> you know how it is. Let's jump in here. Uh, so I want to go with that. Leave the dolly there with the two behind. Let's load this up. If I fill this up, great. If I don't, not the end of the world. Let's bring that through past the pigs. So, let's take this tree down. I've got a couple of stumps to take out. I've got my John Deere over there with the, the tree be gone kind of stump grinder, mulcher. Now, I haven't got my Thing turned on. Let's get some lights on. What are we in trouble with? There we go. Whoa, what happened there? Right, so I've cleared a little bit. We'll get rid of those stumps in a minute. So, let's try the wheel loader. Um, I'll do it with the ones I just did. I mean, they're not actually lined up, to be fair. I could do it. Charging up a little bit first. Let's do that. And I say, we, we're getting to the point now. I mean, we're in March. We should get slightly longer days, but we'll start losing the light fairly soon. Let's just give those a nudge. The day has run away with me today. It's, 30, it's about 30 degrees here where I am at the moment, which isn't overly hot. I'd say it's not overly hot. It used to be. When I were a lad growing up, if you had temperatures above 25 degrees, it was considered like, you know, it was hot. Um, now we've kind of got into that thing I've said before in the other week when we had temperatures up around 40. Temperatures are sort of 32, 33, 34, 35 now. Like, oh yeah, that's a hot day. 30 degrees was still, was still a hot day. I had to take the new camper down to the company where we got it from because we're having an awning fitted on the side. It didn't come with one and we wanted one. So I dropped it off and walked home, <laughs> not realising it was 30 degrees. Oh, blimey. Did I get a bead on or what? So yeah, that was um, that was interesting, to say the least. We'll go back and collect it in a little while, so that's the problem. Simon so took me to get down there, drop it off, and it was two and a half miles back in sweltering heat. I stopped at a little supermarket. I stopped to get a drink because I was so thirsty. Um, gee, what did you do with tilting? There we go. And um, went in. They had, in the, the refrigerated section, they had one bottle of water. That, all the shelves were empty. One 500 milliliter bottle of water. So I picked it up. Oh, Thanks for that. I need it. Um, came out the shop, started walking up the road and opened it. Took a massive guzzle on it and thought, hang on a minute, this tastes weird. It was sparkling. I'm not a big fan of sparkling. And the problem was that every big mouthful I took, <laughs> a slight problem, but burp pinch. So um, yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I must have. When I was in Germany, um, when I went to. FarmCon 19. 
most of the water they had available, I mean, they did have still water, but a lot of them drank sparkling. And they found it weird that I was asking for still water all the time. I don't just, I know, my wife loves sparkling water, so it cleanses the palate, she likes that. Right, so that's the grab. I mean, we got you know, pretty much a full tree, so four, potentially five logs, the last one being quite small. So what we're going to do is drop that off. I'm hoping with the wheel loader and that John Deere grab, I'm not going to need any weights on the back. I have got the weights on the telehandler, so there's no reason at all why I can't grab a weight and stick it on the back if I need to. So let's grab that. I've got this one for wheel loader. Let's grab the first load. See how we get on. Again, that's not actually particularly straight. I'd say straight, lined up. Let's see if we can just give that a little bit of a nudge. Just tap it in. Better. That one as well. Getting the angle just right, not quite. Depth of perception is appalling. There we go. So, I'll give that a little bit of as well. I think we might be that tipping point. If I bring that back like that, I don't know. I think if I put too many more on, we are going to get a tip, aren't we? Let's try that one over there. Yeah, I can already feel it. It's very heavy on the front axle, and the back axle is lifting ever so slightly. Isn't it weird how you can, you can already can get that feel there's no haptic feedback there's no you know but you can feel it how weird but yeah right okay we're all right I'll say we're all right can't mind the pigs here is not going to like turning too much I don't think and obviously there's the height issue as well let's get that in yeah I'm not going to get that any higher that's the only downside with the again the wheel loader versus the telehandler I can't get over that support that's as high as I can get that without tipping the entire trailer over ah see that's Sully handler all day long. I should, that last log, if I'd have left it as it was, I would have been fine. Okay, I'm going to go back to Sully handler then. That's kind of what, what works for me. I, I'm really looking forward to that Volvo. I, I cannot wait. That clamp on that the new Volvo is huge. Okay. So. Never mind. Fair for try. And I'm kind of asking myself, apart from when I used the wheel loader earlier, um, when I first got it, what I'm really using it for now, because these, this does the job. You've seen me load with these before, so I'll get some logs on. We'll get those up to North Sawmill, and I'll probably skip ahead till tomorrow. Like I say, we will start losing losing the light soon. Bring that back a little bit, and we kind of we sit all right. That's three big old logs on there as well. I was just thinking, actually, that's not as many, but they are quite big. And it comes down to what you prefer as well. If you like using wheel loaders, if you like using those grapples, if you know, there might be a whole load of different methods and ways you like doing it. Pick what works for you. 
you know, like I said, I went for so long using manure forks and I just found they grabbed stuff so much better. I just way preferred them. And then when grapples like this came out, I started using these because I just I prefer them. They work better, I think. And like, like these tension strap ones, if, you, if you're not a big fan of logging, if you might have not been watching all of my this let's play, these make it so much easier and so much more enjoyable, I think. Or you might just be completely against logging altogether and just not want to touch it. In which case, that's also fine. You do you. Could have done with a little bit tidier, but I'm sure it's fine. Oh, it's a bit high. Let's see if we can get that over a little bit.
as you have seen, we're into April. Uh, most of my jobs are, are done, as you can see behind me, because we've gone into the next month. The fields that I was ploughing and liming are now grassed. They're done. Um, all my rolling, I did all the rolling. I know I said I wasn't going <laughs> to. I did think about leasing a second roller, which I did. Did I mention that earlier? Um, this has been recorded in two phases. Um, the day I was due to be going away last Thursday, we weren't leaving until lunchtime. I was still sitting recording this at half twelve. <laughs> and um, we were supposed to be leaving at one. It got to a point I just had to admit defeat and I couldn't get it finished um, and posted. Uh, in the interim, we've gone up, we did the charity walk. It was ridiculously hot. Uh, we did two days out walking in 30 degree heat and I have managed to get heat stroke and COVID. So <laughs> my throat's gone. I'm a horrendously low ebb. Um, as you often are with these things. So what I'm going to do is sell the digestate for this month. You've already sold, seen me sell the gold. Uh, that's been done. And then what I'm going to do is hopefully I'll be able to hook up with this. If, if not, I'll have to go and get the, uh, the tractor I'm going to use. I've got the Kubota over by our poplars. We're going to be doing the poplar baling. But I'm going to be trying a, one of the modded the, the biomass balers there's the standard in-game one and there's the modded one that is um it's supposed to do larger capacity so we're going to go for big bales i've got big bales so uh, that's what we're going to be looking at hopefully if, if the kubota won't pull it i'll go and grab another tractor not a problem at all and um, we can kind of pick and choose that's that done we'll take that it seems to be my default setting isn't it i them to my digest date come up here I have got a load of slurry in the various different places and I haven't done this month's milk moving over to the dairy yet. A uh, few people have messaged me and commented regarding... Regarding? Um, oh, selling everything. Um, a lot of people have been throwing in, throwing their hat in the ring, guessing what we might be making. Oh no, that's a three-point link attacher on there, isn't it? Don't think this will work. I'm just going to have a tractor. Um, not a problem. Yeah, we'll grab a tractor. I'll probably whisk over and grab the milk actually while I'm doing it. I might as well transfer that over. Yeah, so, so people have been guessing how much we're going to make. Um, I've had guesses all the way up to 50 million. A couple were revised, um, one down from 50 to maybe 30. Um, based on the fact I'm going to be selling directly not selling myself so I'm going to I'll take a bit of a hit on payments so that may come down I I, I don't know I was thinking oh we might make 10 million 15 maybe I'm I'm going to be really surprised to see what happens uh, so we'll see so I'm going to yeah so I'm going to sort the milk out I was just going to go and grab that and go over go straight on with the popular bailing and get that done before my throat closes up any more than it already has um keep going through croaky phases if every now and again there's a sudden cut in in the editing um sometimes i manage to do it seamlessly sometimes i don't if i get incredibly croaky or i have a coughing fit or something like that then um apologies i will try and edit it as neatly as possible i should go on the other side of the bridge no a problem but uh well, yeah myself and mr p but we had a fantastic uh, few days away like i say for the thursday we drove up the camp fan people were asking about the camp fan oh it ran like a dream Adaptive cruise control is, oh, it was bliss. It was so, so good. Like night and day from every vehicle I've ever owned prior to this. And I've said it when I said about buying the camp van. If you've had new cars a lot recently and you've got that kind of thing, I've never had anything like that in any vehicle I've ever owned. I've always had older cars. I've never bought a car. I mean, this isn't brand new, brand new. It's a year old, but um, wow. And we drove up in 36 degree heat <laughs> with air con. Oh. And if I, the other thing as well I found, I know people, maybe people aren't interested, I've just gone past the cows, haven't I? Um, about, yeah, people said about aircon and I had all different people offer me, me, me advice and my dad always said, oh, I'd never use aircon, son, or it, it burns through your fuel, it eats your fuel, and especially with fuel prices by there at the moment. It was so hot, we were kind of at that point like, you know what, we're going to have to. Um, who won? Oh, I've gone too far we're going to have to put the aircon on, you know? 
And I was concerned because our, our Safira that we had before was a slightly smaller car. It was a people carrier, but it was smaller. This obviously being a camper van is a bit bigger, but it's actually got a smaller engine than the Safira had. So I didn't know how it was going to pan out, you know. It was, the fuel efficiency was way better than Safira. I was amazed by it. And that was with aircon on the entire journey up. Um, we used far less fuel. The fuel tank on it is about 10... Hang on, I'm trying to think. Say 10 litres. Yeah. I think it's 10 litres larger. The Sphere is a 60 litre tank. This is a 70. Um, so, yes, it holds a little bit more, but we used far less. I was, I was so happy with it. Uh, yeah, brilliant. And the problem was, because we'd already booked this trip to do this charity walk, before we bought the camper, we were staying in a and b um, so next trip will be a camping one where we're actually going to use the uh, all the gear, you know. I've missed that. Completely. There we go. Let's get that in. So yeah, the walk was impressive. I put up a couple of um, short video. I mean, they weren't short. So I, I'm thinking about. It. I could have done YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. I could have done some YouTube shorts. Um, I just posted them on my Facebook page. If you don't follow me on my Facebook page, jump on the Facebook page. There was a couple of videos. Uh, there were 750 people doing the walk. Um, and I kind of talked a little bit about it on there. I didn't really say much about it before we left. Um, on the Friday we went and there was a, 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 like a, a talk. The guy who had organised it all. It's a fascinating story. There's a book um, called um, Max the Miracle Dog. Um, and it's the story of this guy, Kerry, Kerry Irving. My wife follows his channel and has been for a long time. And he had a horrendous car accident quite a few years ago. It injured his neck and his back and he was in a real state and he was struggling a lot. He talks, he talks very openly about, um, actually I'll tell you all. Yeah, he talks very openly about depression and mental health and uh, suicide and all sorts of stuff you know he considered it and it was quite a quite harrowing it, you know he wrote this book and he was he was asked to write the book and wrote the book about his life and then and it, it became a bestseller and a lot of hospitals various different places in their wings where people are suffering with mental health issues um, they recommend the book as a read and I would say you know read it um, he got to a point where he was at his lowest ebb and his wife said, you know, he had to go to the local shop, you've got to go and get a pint of milk. She knew he needed to get out of the house, she knew he wouldn't get out of bed, he wouldn't, you know, shave, he wouldn't shower, he was just so, you know, he used to cycle hundreds of miles and because of his back and neck injury he couldn't cycle anymore. Um, so after a few, three or four days of being nagged he decides, I'm going, alright, I'll go to the shop. It's like a two, three minute walk, but in the state he's in, he's going to struggle, you know. On the way there, walks past a garden. This dog, Max, is in the garden. Comes to the gate, wagging its tail, you know. And the lady that owned it was quite elderly and she couldn't walk him out very much at all. And so the dog was in the garden a lot of the time. So over a period of quite a while, Kerry would go back and forwards to the shop. More to see the dog than it was to get him from the shop. And he would just talk to the dog about everything that was going on in his life, and you know, that kind of thing. And, um, then he asked if he could walk the dog, and the lady said absolutely, so he started walking the dog. And then when the lady got to a point she couldn't really look after the dog herself properly anymore, um, they are, uh, Kerry asked could he take the dog on as, as his own, you know, so he did. Uh, then they started doing these walks, and one day, completely by accident, uh, he was trying to do a video of what he was doing, um, where he was when he was walking, and he went live on his phone, by accident, of him walking the dog. And that became a thing. And he's done charity, so many charity events now. He's, he had three dogs and um, he's raised over 550 million pounds. No, 550 million, 550 thousand pounds for charities, North Air Ambulance, Great North Air Ambulance, all sorts of stuff, it's amazing. Well, a year ago, the dog Max passed away. So the walk we did was in honor of the dog. Um, and the talk we went to on the Friday, it was, it was incredible. I mean, such an amazing, an inspiring story as well. Um, so seeing all these people all, all dressed, and his colour was orange, so it, it's the, the colour of the merch, and that, the merchandise he has, and all that kind of stuff is all orange. So everyone was dressed in orange, and uh, it was supposed to be a brew for Moo, and we were supposed to be going up to this place called Tuit Tarn. Everyone was going to sit around the Tarn, which is a kind of lake up on the 
hillside mountain sun and um, have a brew. But because it was 30 degree heat, most people got up there. Uh, there was no shade whatsoever. Um, and it was a struggle. And I said to Mr. CDP, we could, you couldn't carry enough water for the amount you were sweating while you were walking and, and getting up there. Um, you couldn't carry enough water to replenish what you were losing, so you were constantly dehydrating. It, it was, you know, but doing it was an incredible thing. And the one bit of video that didn't record, and I was gutted, as we were walking down the route, down into the valley, then back up to the side, there was just this line, this sea of orange, like a serpent, snaking down through the fields, down into the valley, and up the other side. It was an incredible sight. So, no, yeah, that's what we, that's what we did. You know, we had a great old time. Um, we met some amazing people. Um, it was great. The problem was the Sunday we were destroyed. I think a lot of people were. Um, and we really, we really took it easy on the Sunday. So um, that's what we spent the weekend doing. It was great. Um, and then, like I say, Sunday I started to feel a bit ill. Uh, woke up Monday. We was coming home Monday, and oh, my throat was sore and swollen. And I just had no energy whatsoever. I thought we've got, we've got to drive like five hours home which we did. By the time we got back yesterday, I was done. So unfortunately, this video was supposed to post yesterday and I did think about doing the mod review yesterday, but I, I was in no state. I was gonna use, I'm gonna try the Kubota. Sorry, I just started explaining. I know some people were asking what I was doing and I posted a couple of videos, just short little clip videos. The North, the Great North Air Ambulance came and landed in the field next to where all the parking was happening before it started. Um, and that's what I put up, but people were asking what was it all about, what was it doing, why was everyone wearing orange, that kind of thing. Um, now this requires 200 horsepower, that is 200 horsepower. So we'll see. The other thing I want to do is put that on, because I want to change bale size, 132, 133, 134, I'll go to 134. I don't know how big they're going to be. Uh, do I want to turn on an automatic drop? Probably. That now, I can normally swing this out, can't we? Ah, there we go. We're going to go that side start off with. So, this is what I was aiming to get done. The poplars, like I said in an earlier episode, or might have been earlier in this episode, this was all done because I wanted to do wood chips before the wood chipping mods became available. I have no idea what. So, this is the modded one, this is the large sort of balers. So, this should have a much larger capacity than standard which means we have far less bales to collect. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to take them and sell them or keep them. I might just take them and sell them. I might stack them up somewhere for the time being. But this was a job that I wanted to get done. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are usually 2,000 litres, aren't they? Big bales. So, yeah. I, yeah, I just yeah, I thought I'd, I would explain. That's what we were up to. Next trip away, as far as I'm aware, is November. <laughs> and in November, I'm taking my PlayStation away with me because I think we're away for a week and Mr. City P's got to work a couple of those days. So uh, I think we had originally booked to go away for two weeks, but I said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we've got stuff coming out, haven't we? End of August and then... Um, is that in September? I'm trying to think of the different things that are coming out. Wow, these are going to be pretty large, but we are going to have quite a lot anyway, aren't we? I'm just thinking that. Uh, what that? No, that one was right. So let's swing it the other way. Now what I could do is just go um, round in a big loop and just keep the bale on one side if I wanted to. But in all honesty, it doesn't matter too much. I'll just swing it like this. Actually, I probably could have gone a bit further, couldn't I? Let's. How far would that let me go? Well, this doesn't have a pre-chamber, so once it's full, we are going to need to stop, even though it is going to be an auto-unload. Otherwise, we'll miss. Wow, it's only got seven and a half. Great. 8,000 litre bales. Wow. Still going to be interesting how many we get. They seem so small for 8,000 litres. <laughs> the thumbnail is going to be interesting. I wish it's big bales. 
Everyone's going to be looking at the thumbnail like, what is he talking about? They're tiny. <laughs> Just trying to work out I'm going to do this. This is going to take a lot longer than I thought as well, because I, I just, in my head again, I'm thinking, it's not that big a field really, is it? Because um, <laughs> my other, the other option rather than, what I might do is bail half of it and then the other half wood chip, because there was that other header I was going to use, wasn't I, that was um, designed specifically for this. What was it under? So I'm just thinking now, I might have to change this up a little bit. Forage harvester headers, have I still got it installed? Uh, that one there, the poplar uh, poplar header. There is, um, if I got, I don't know if I've got the other one as well, the pop X. Yeah, I've got the pop six X there, which is a six meter one. But this is a nine, isn't it? That one there is a nine. Um, I mean, that is more unconventional because I used it for the sugar cane. That one is just a wider version of the ones we've got already, which is a more conventional poplar header I think did I use that on FS19 I think I might have done or did I just do the mod review on it I can't remember now um, so I've got a couple of options I could just grab the forage harvester that would make it a lot quicker so I'm going to do a few bales first I think do have access to this land, how very dare you all. That's the only problem we're doing with this. I suppose I could just drive through the poplar. I know, I guess that's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? I suppose you need someone coming alongside you, don't you? Sorting the bales out. Hmm. Didn't really want to drive through the middle of it, but let's try that right up. Swing around. Still not straight, is it? That's better. <laughs> oh, deary me. I had the idea for the thumbnail and the idea for the title before I started doing this. And I must admit, I always remembered the, the bales being a lot bigger, but they really aren't on it. <laughs> I guess that doesn't work, does it? Should we just push it down a little bit? I'm glad the kebab was pulling it. I wasn't sure if I'd get one of those messages saying I didn't have enough horsepower, but we're on the flat as well, so I guess it's not too much of an issue. I have been collecting all, I thought I'd do that as well. I have been collecting all of my um, potatoes and my sugar beet's still growing, so I've been, oh, I've got a load more here. Oh, I've got to do that now. <laughs> How much have I got in here at the moment? I've completely lost track. 386,000 litres of potatoes in there. We've got a tonne already that we've sorted in here. 113,000 litres of premium, 90,000 seed. Another 10,000 litres of pig food. Wow, okay. I'll see you in a bit when I've got a few more of these bales and then um, we'll have a look at Let's mix up a little bit and let's get another uh, another way of doing it out here, shall we? Oh, I like that one, that's really cool.
course I changed my mind. <laughs> I always do, don't I? Um, I decided, you know what? I'm going along quite happily doing the bailing. So I'm going to carry on bailing. We've got, I think, 20... I think we're up to 20 bales. So that's 8,000 litres bale. That's 160,000 litres of wood chips. These are going to be the first part of our big sell-off, I guess. Because um, I've got plenty of wood chips everywhere. These can just be sold. Um, this trailer is part of the pack. The selectable bale capacity mod that's it isn't it hang on let's just double check under bale loaders it's something like that, isn't it selectable bale capacity mod yeah so if you are going to pick up bales using any of the balers from this pack you need the bale loaders from this pack as well they these are liftable bales these ones are from the uh, selectable bale capacity and as you can see picks up wood chip bales no problem at all i think this holds no this doesn't hold 24 does it maybe it does so I'm going to start collecting these. I'll finish off the rest of the field of poplars off camera. I'm pretty sure poplars regrow again, don't they? I'll probably just fertilise it and then uh, let it go. I'm not going to do anything with it after this anyway. So, um, oh yeah, because we've got three stacks on here, so it probably is going to be 24, isn't it? I haven't used one of these uh, auto stack trailers in quite a long time. I haven't done much bathing actually recently. Nice to do a bit more. I did square bathing last time, didn't I? When I did my hay bales, so. I love that it picks up the wood chip bales too. It does make life a little bit easier. So yeah, these will go to one side, and then what we'll do is, bearing in mind we're only, what, it's 10 past seven in the morning. Oh, I didn't do the time again. Sorry not on my game at the moment I'm really not um, so it should be a little bit later probably eight-ish or something like that uh, so we've got the whole rest of the day and we can get cracking on whatever we're gonna do next um, I have got a sorghum field that's ready to harvest I might just clear that the chickens I'm up to 5,000 well I've hit my max in the in the barn and we're getting to about 20,000 litres of feed a day that said we're getting about 15,000 litres if not more of eggs every single day in storage I think I'm up over 80,000 litres of eggs so when we get to some of the stuff we'll be selling automatically some of the stuff we're gonna have to deliver ourselves so I might have to get one of the um, articulated lorry ones um, to do that because some of them I've got so much stuff my small delivery trailers just aren't gonna cut it um, I think I'll, the, the premium potatoes and stuff I, I will sell and the potatoes that's in storage will sell uh, so there's a few products, I've got all that lime sitting there and then there's going to be, and then what's going to take the most time is going to be getting stuff out of all those methane tanks because they were really slow to unload. So I think while other stuff's selling I might have to just set myself a target of say look I'm just going to have to unload that as I go and then all the silage that's over at the farm can go over to the biogas plant, we'll honk through that. I mean it could take me a couple of days, a couple of months potentially to get through it all to then see where we're at um, but that's what we'll be that's what we're going to be doing I'm not selling any of the machinery I'm not selling any of the equipment um, any of the buildings nothing like that the productions are all staying I'm just going to be selling off all the commodities all the products all the things we've made all the things we've prepared to make all the products we've put into factories ready to go so it'll just be a case of setting them all off to run and let's see what happens really um, I was going to do, different people have mentioned different things about the flyover, I, I think I'm just going to do it through the build mode, I know there's different, you know, people have had different suggestions on how that would best be done, but it's just to have a quick overview of the farm, rather than just looking on the map, we can have a little bit more of a, a sort of real time view of it I think is the best way of looking at it. So there we go, there's our 20, this will hold 24. I'll put these to one side. I don't know how many we're going to end up, end up with in total. We're not going to make a huge amount of money from them. But again, it's another process I haven't done for a while. And I thought, let's bail some wood chip, some poplar. Uh, and that's, I think that's it. Is that where I'm going to stop? I think so. I think I've waffled enough today, haven't I? I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> this was going to be another short episode. Didn't turn out that way, did it? Um, so I will see you on the next one for the great British sell-off. Great British sell-out? No, that's... 
No. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.